We absolutely cannot survive in this world without water. And guaranteed water to the South Rim is in peril as long as we have the existing pipeline and infrastructure in place. And if we don't have that, then everybody goes home. People live and migrate to places where water is available. The interesting thing is if you look at the archaeological record and where people of the past lived and preferred to be, and where people of the present live and prefer to be, they're the same places because they provide the exact same conditions, water, shade, and resources. The genesis of the Trans Canyon Pipeline was as a means to provide secure water at a volume that would meet the needs of the visitors coming to the Grand Canyon and the development that was occurring in Grand Canyon after World War II. Water in the Trans Canyon Pipeline begins at Roaring Springs and flows downhill, losing 2,740 feet in elevation to Phantom Ranch, and then it lifts 1,300 feet in elevation up to Indian Gardens and then rises another 3,000 feet by positive pressure pumps up to the South Rim. But the build of the pipeline was a logistic challenge like the Park Service had never undertaken, especially for that time. The contract for the Trans Canyon Pipeline was awarded 1964 to Halverson Incorporated and Ellie Halverson had a penchant for choosing logistically very difficult projects. Everything had to be brought in by helicopter. There were no roads. It's got 700 horizontal curves and 1,200 vertical curves along the pipeline. All those things together made it an engineering marvel. So the Trans Canyon Pipeline was intended to last for 30 years. It's now coming on to 50 years, so it's serviced us for 20 years longer than anticipated. And so now as it ages, with the grit that runs through the system, it's more and more susceptible to breaking and is breaking more frequently. This is a sprayer. It's not a full-blown break. It's hard to tell right now, but I would guess that it's an old weld that's just, you know, 40 years old, and it finally, with the high pressures, is eaten through it. And it's probably a little tiny pinhole or a crack, but under the pressure, it's, it's uh, putting out a lot of water. We're gonna get our sling loads in, and a uh, welder, and our tools, and we will excavate it. When this pipeline breaks, it's, it's, it's go time. It's, uh, that's, it's time to get, we've got to get down here as soon as we can. We're under a lot of pressure to get it, get the water back on, because Phantom has about a two or three day supply. And after that, they start talking evacuations and it's not what we want to do. This pipeline's so fragile, everything with this pipeline is slow. You go fast with any step, you're gonna blow it somewhere else. So every, from step one to step 20, it's slow and meticulous just to prevent another break. Like all the other valves around here, this valve's probably 30, 40 years old and it's just exceeded its life at this point. Everybody drinks water, so it's not just one or two or you know a certain percentage of the population that are relying on me and, and my work. It's everybody.
my very first week I was here, I went on a nice long hike. I sat at the Arizona room and I drank almost three pitchers of water. And the next day I saw the chief of the facility and he says, where does all our water come from? And he goes, oh God, I'm so glad you asked. He goes, it's this pipeline and it's really you know, worn out and we're having all kinds of trouble with it. And I said, well, what are we doing about it? What are we doing in the system? Have we asked for help? And he goes, well, it's just been so overwhelming of the idea and that we could never get that much money. We really haven't come up with a long-term strategy. We're just fixing it as we go. The money that it would take to repair this pipeline, about $150 million was that original estimate, is more than all parks get over a three-year period. What would happen if we had a catastrophic failure? The immediate impact would be an economic ripple through the whole uh, southwest. Uh, Northern Arizona would be in shock. The economic engine of the park itself, easily 500 million a year, several thousand jobs here at the canyon in gateway communities in and around the park. But what would be lost is visitation. We'd have to literally send everybody home. Right now, underway, we have a construction project down at Phantom Ranch to replace 2,800 feet of the 15 miles. That 2,800 feet is going to cost us about $3.5 million. It's going to take several months, and it's a good precursor to what the challenge we have uh, to replace the whole pipeline. When you have a, a, a gorilla this big in your office, you cannot just ignore it. It's there every single day, and we need to come up with a long-term strategy for repair of the Trans Canyon Pipeline, and we also have to come up with public support and congressional support to fund the replacement of that pipeline, and also for the park to redirect its resources, as limited as they are, to make sure the number one critical infrastructure piece in the whole National Park Service, and that's my opinion, it is the Grand Canyon's Trans Canyon Pipeline, and it must be repaired. This pipeline is, is the main artery for the Grand Canyon. Without water, you just wouldn't be able to have what we have here. We've got a real precious thing here, this water, and we need to take care of it.